Hello everyone and welcome to the weekly market podcast. So let's first take a look into Indian markets closing for the week. So during the week uh, the union budget of 24-25 was a major event and domestic equity markets witnessed heightened volatility as market participants were caught off guard in- by increase in long term and short term capital gains tax in the budget. Increase in STT on FNO was on expected lines as regulators were hinting on measures to curb speculative activity in uh, futures and options market. So these were some of the reforms uh, which were announced in the uh, union budget and if one wants to um, uh, take further uh, uh, you know look into the uh, budget then we have also released a union budget report uh, during the week and um, we have uh, put uh, the uh, link uh, to access that report in our uh, weekly market uh, um, report so one can get an access uh, to that budget report also uh, in that budget report uh, we have uh, you know recommended uh, 10 uh, budget picks uh, which uh, includes names like tata Cons- consultancy services ntpc rec hero motocorp kalyan jewelers lic housing finance amara raja energy beml Bo- uh, bombay burma trading corporation and wellspun enterprises so uh, this was about the union budget report uh, apart from this uh, you know uh, continuing with the uh, indian markets uh, major event uh, for the week uh, the robust liquidity in the hands of dis came in uh, as a savior and every dip was bought in uh, uh, you know uh, by the dis uh, overall during the week nifty 50 uh, was up by 1.2% bse sensex was up by 0.9% Uh, broader markets have outperformed the uh, benchmarks with nifty mid cap 100 gaining 3.3% and nifty small cap 100 gaining by 2.5% uh, uh, for the week uh, uh, you know in indian market uh, on the basis of uh, uh, june month uh, quarterly results stock specific action was seen in companies where there was a beat or disappointment on the earnings front and uh, these companies witnessed a wild swing So uh, during the week some companies which announced uh, better than expected numbers were Indian Hotels Ashok Leyland uh, United Spirits etc while companies which reported uh, somewhat disappointing set of numbers were Axis Bank Tech Mahindra etc so so far uh, earning season has not been that exciting and the scale is more tilted in the favor of disappointment uh, from global macro perspective US economy has reported better than expected gdp growth number for the second quarter of cy24 at 2.8% year on year versus the consensus expectation of uh, 2% year on year growth this has kept the hope of rate cut by us fed alive for the month of uh, september uh, 2024 policy meeting uh, also people's bank of china unexpectedly lowered the uh, cost of its one year policy loan by 20 basis points to 2.3% so these were some of the uh, you know major developments from the uh, global uh, macro uh, perspective now talking about the weekly sectoral gainers and losers on bsc then except for bsc bank x and reality which closed lower by 2.5% and 1.7% respectively all the sectors ended positive on bsc for the week with major sectoral gainers being bsc power healthcare Uh, which were up by more than 5% each and auto and consumer durables which rose more than 4% for the week talking about the weekly nifty 50 gainers and losers then tata motors hdfc life sun pharma ntpc and uh, bpcl were the top 5 gainers of nifty 50 while axis bank wipro nestle india icici bank and bajaj finserv were the top 5 losers of the nifty 50 index taking a check on some of the key monetables then uh, on the fund flow side fis were net sellers to the tune of rupees 1821 crores while dis were net buyers to the tune of 8110 crores during the week in cash market the usd inr remained stable at rupees 83.67 per us dollar uh, the brent crude oil dropped 2.5% week on week to 80.6 dollar per barrel now moving on to uh, some of the key economic developments then uh, as i uh, just mentioned uh, the us economy grew at an annualized rate of 2.8% year on year versus the consensus estimates of 2% year on year in the second quarter of cy24 the economy continued to outperform its uh, global peers uh, thereby showing signs of continued consumer res- uh, resilience as uh, the fed is now considering cutting interest rates in the coming months Uh, government spending and consumer spending rose by 2.6% year on year and 2.3% year on year respectively while disposable personal income increased by 3.6% year on year to 186.3 billion us dollars also uh, the people's bank of china slashed the rate of its one year medium term lending facility by 20 basis points to 2.3% 
This was the biggest rate cut since the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. China is now trying to accelerate the uh, economic growth through various monetary and uh, fiscal measures. So these were the two key uh, major developments uh, globally. Now uh, moving on to some of the key corporate developments during the week. Uh, then first one in uh, Mankind Pharma, uh, the company has announced to buy Bharat Serums and Vaccines for rupees 13,630 crores. So uh, positive for Mankind Pharma in uh, medium to long term. Tax Marco Rail and Engineering will acquire Jindal Rail Infrastructure from GI, uh, JITF Urban Infrastructure Service for an aggregate amount of Rs. 465 crores. So positive for the company again in medium to long term. Gandhar Oil Refinery has incorporated a new subsidiary Gandhar Life Sciences which will carry out the pharmaceuticals and cosmetics business. So neutral to positive for the company in medium to long term. Uh, Gensol Engineering has emerged as preferred bidder for 116 megawatt solar projects in Gujarat, so positive for the company in medium, uh, short to medium term. Anantraj, through its unit, entered into MOU with uh, Google to provide AI-infused solutions for data infrastructure and security, so positive for the company over medium to long term. HDFC Bank's board gave green signal to start the initial public offering process of its arm HDB Financial, so uh, neutral to positive for HDFC Bank in short term. Oil India signed a contract with Dolphin Drilling Norway to hire Dolphin uh, Dolphins Drilling Unit Blackford, so positive for Oil India in uh, long term. Lemon Tree Hotel signed a licensing pack for a 44-room hotel in Punjab and 57-room hotel in Goa, so positive for the company in um, uh, medium to long term. Uh, Reliance Industries Unit Reliance New Energy acquired uh, the balanced 12.7% stake in Reliance Lithium for an amount worth 3.7 million uh, um, euros so positive for uh, the company in uh, long term. Titagar Rail Systems commenced uh, the export of traction converters with the first shipment to Italy so positive for the company. Infosys signed a contract with UVC partners for co-creating next generation solutions with the help of AI and deep technology so positive for the company in uh, medium term. Tidewater Oil changed its name to Vidal Corporation so neutral for uh, Tidewater Oil. Uh, Nestle India and Dr. Reddy's Laboratories announced a formation of JV uh, that is Dr. Reddy's and Nestle Health Science Limited. So positive for both the companies in uh, medium to long term. Also, uh, BSE received uh, SEBI's green light to act as a research analyst and investment advisor administration po uh, body. So that will be positive for the company over uh, medium to long term. Now, apart from these uh, economic, de uh, sorry, uh, corporate developments, there were some uh, key order inflows that was wit uh, witnessed in some of the companies. So, discussing them, a uh, few of them uh, one by one. So, first one is SJVN Limited. Uh, the company received uh, an order worth Rs. 13,948 crores from government of Mizoram for about uh, 72 months uh, uh, period. So, that will be positive for SJVN Limited in uh, medium term. Um, other than this, KEC International received an order uh, worth Rs. 1,422 crores uh, during the week. Um, GE Power India received order worth Rs. 348 crores from NTPC GE Power Services Private Limited uh, with an execution span of 44 months, so positive for the company in medium term. Uh, Bajil Projects received order worth Rs. 586 crores from Power Grid Corporation of India uh, for an execution time span of 23 months. Um, also, Rights Limited received uh, order worth Rs. 321 crores from Directorate of Medical Education and Research of Mumbai uh, with an execution time span of uh, 30 months. So, uh, apart from this, Railway uh, Rail Vikas Nikam Limited also received uh, order worth Rs. 192 crores from Southeastern Railway. Uh, this is for an execution uh, time of uh, one, uh, 18 months. So, uh, these were some of the order inflows received by the companies during the week. Uh, also, during the week, we have uh, recommended one call on uh, Just Dial Limited uh, under our pick of the week call segment, uh, the duration, uh, investment duration for which is, uh, you know, 12 to uh, 14 months. So, uh, Just Dial Limited is basically India's premier local search engine uh, th that offers a wide array of uh, localized services to users across the country through various platforms. Uh, the company's uh, services connects uh, sellers of products and services with uh, potential buyers and uh, users. And the primary objective of the platform is to empower millions of MSMEs in India, uh, thereby enabling them to transition into internet-ready entities. So, uh, some of the key uh, rationals for the company, uh, you know, to invest are, uh, the first is uh, the company has robust business model and uh, negative working capital. 
it has pan india presence with about 59% of its revenues being generated from the top 11 cities in india and rest from tier 2 and tier 3 cities also over the last few years uh, the company has intensified its efforts to expand presence in smaller towns and cities and has been experiencing a significant increase in internet usage uh, it has also solid uh, financial track record uh, uh, over the past 10 years uh, as it has delivered strong performance with revenue and pad jumping 2.3 times and uh, 3 times during the period uh, it also generates robust ebitda margin of uh, more than 20% so overall uh, these are some of the key important uh, uh, you know investment rationals for uh, just dial limited now uh, after talking about the key market data points of uh, you know of the week gone by now let's focus on uh, what is the market outlook for next week so going forward uh, the market will keep a track of the ongoing result season uh, us fed meeting which is going to happen on 31st july so basically the outcome of us fed meeting will come on 31st july uh, also rbi policy will uh, happen on 8th august so market will focus on that event also uh, distribution of monsoon will also uh, you know have some limelight political environment in us and uh, measures by china to accelerate uh, growth will also be uh, in focus of the market uh, at the current juncture uh, nifty 50 is trading at fi 25p uh, multiple of 22 times which is neither cheap nor in a euphoric zone so possibility of gradual drift along with consolidation can be seen over the next few weeks uh, but deep correction is ruled out on the back of uh, about uh, rupees 1.3 trillion of cash in the hands of domestic mutual funds uh, but the volatility is like volatility is likely to increase uh, from the sectoral perspective sectors like it telecom auto especially the two wheelers uh, consumption um, especially with focus on hospitality and jewelry pharma and healthcare oil and gas power utilities railway wagon infrastructure all these uh, are likely to outperform during the next three months uh, and after this, uh, you know, uh, for key corporate actions uh, for the next week, uh, one can refer to our weekly wrap report. The link to view the report is shared in the description box below. And as I mentioned, uh, we have also shared the link uh, to view the union budget report, uh, which we have released during the week. So one can have an access uh, to that link also from our uh, weekly wrap report. So this was all about the weekly market podcast. Thank you everyone for listening. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.